and gentlemen, welcome to the 2015 Saul Price School of Public Policy commencement. I am Carol Rush, Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Please rise and welcome the class of 2015. The procession is now entering the arena. It is led by our two undergraduate student flag bearers. On the right-hand side of the arena is Taylor Vaughn, our valedictorian, and on the left side of the arena is undergraduate student leader, Emily Boom. The faculty are now entering the arena. Dean Jack Knott is leading the faculty on the right side of the arena, and senior associate deans Marlon Bournett and Genevieve Giuliano are leading the faculty on the left. The doctoral graduates are entering the right side of the arena, led by Doctor of Philosophy graduate Jung Hung Choi and Doctor of Policy Planning and Development graduate Justin McCusker. The master students are now entering the venue and are processing down the right and left aisles. Leading the master's graduates are MHA graduates led by Rachel Chang, Student Health Council President, and Tiffany San Juan, Student Health Council Vice President. They are followed by the Executive Master of Health Administration graduates led by Varesh Chareja and Julie Sand. Executive Master of Leadership graduates follow, led by Courtney Higuchi and Roland Gallardo. Leading the Master of Planning students is Association of Students and Pl of Planning and Development President Jason Douglas and Rosalind Teo, President of Partnership for Equitable Los Angeles. The Master of Public Administration students follow, led by Graduate Policy and Administration Community Vice President Kaya Ukonetsky and International City County Management Association President Brittany Mello. Following the MPA students are the Master of Public Policy students, led by Angie Jean Marie, GPAC President, and Emily Gahn, President of Women Leading Policy Planning and Development. The Master of International Public Policy and Management students are led by IPAM Graduate Student Association Presidents Caswell Fueta and Barbara Mimi Shang. The Master of Real Estate Development students follow, led by Graduate Real Estate Association President Hunter Beaumont and Alvin Zhu. Concluding the procession are the undergraduate students led by Ariana Martino and Chanel to Chang Yang.
Welcome, everyone. Could you be seated, please? On behalf of the USC Saul Price School of Public Policy, I welcome each and every one of you to our 2015 commencement ceremony. My name is... <laughs> My name is Jack Knott, and I am the Dean of uh, Price School. Of course, the only way to kick off this ceremony is by saying congratulations to the graduating class of 2015. And I'm so pleased to join you on this special occasion. I'm especially pleased we get together to celebrate uh, indoors instead of outside in the rain. <laughs> this is a very important milestone, and you should be very, very proud of your accomplishment. Today, we have a graduates attending our commencement ceremony from several different locations. In addition to our students here in Los Angeles, we have students from the Master of Public Administration degree program that we offer in Sacramento. And we have students here from our online degree programs in the Master of Public Administration and the Executive Master of Health Administration. So I'm very delighted to welcome all of our students from here in LA, from Sacramento, and from across the country. I would like to thank all of our guests for joining us as well, especially those who have traveled a long way to be here. It is often said that education begins at home. The people and places we come from shape who we are. All, to all of the parents, friends, and loved ones here, your support and encouragement have been essential to our graduates, so let's give our families and friends a rousing round of applause and thank them for what they do. I also want to thank our remarkable faculty and dedicated staff who have worked so hard to provide you with the best education. Will the faculty and staff please rise and please join me in thanking all of the faculty and staff. At this time, I would like to recognize a few of today's graduates for their exceptional achievements. Two Price undergraduates were designated as university scholars at commencement a very prestigious distinction. These students took advantage of their access to price resources and opportunities to broaden their areas of interest. This year, Price students were selected for the following university-wide honors. The Global Scholars Program, recognizing undergraduates who have excelled academically while becoming world citizens. The Discovery Scholars Program, recognizing undergraduates have, who have excelled in the classroom while demonstrating the ability to create exceptional new scholarship. And the Renaissance Scholars Program, recognizing undergraduates who have excelled academically while pursuing at least two disparate fields of study. Emily Boone was certified as a global and discovery scholar. Today she earns a undergraduate degree in policy planning and development with a health policy and management track and a minor in health, public health. The Global Scholar designation was based on her study abroad of health policy and management at the London School of Economics and her primary care internship with the British National Health Service. The Discovery Scholar recognition was based on her work with the faculty at the Keck School of Medicine, which was funded through a provost grant, as well as her work on cancer screening guidelines supported by a research grant from the Price School. Taylor Vaughn is certified as a global renaissance and discovery scholar. He is earning a Bachelor of Science in Policy Planning and Development with a sustainable planning track and a minor in architecture. Taylor's selection was due in part to his research supported 
by a Price School Sure research grant that will allow him to travel globally and explore the Olympics' impact on host cities, as well as his work in a Price class contributing to revitalization efforts in Detroit. So would Emily and Taylor, will you please stand and may we salute you. In addition, I'd like to make two special acknowledgments. Master of Public Policy graduate Brandon D. Brühl has had to overcome unique challenges in his education journey. Due to a severe case of dyslexia, he barely graduated from high school and at the time assumed that he wouldn't be able to go to college. But 15 years later, through perseverance and figuring out a system to do what comes naturally to most of us, Brandon is graduating today from the Price School where he's been a very active member of our student community. After commencement, he's going on to a prestigious Google Policy Fellowship in Washington, D.C. So congratulations, Brandon. We also have a special guest today. Ed Baker is a proud USC alum and the father of two USC graduates. He earned his bachelor's degree from the Price School 35 years ago. But at the time of his graduation in 1980, he was a deputy with the LA County Sheriff's Department and unfortunately had to miss the ceremony to attend to pressing duties in that role. He never had the chance to walk across the stage and hear his name called. So today he finally gets to experience that moment in front of his family and all of us. So please uh, give congratulations to Ed as well. Thank you. <laughs> to our graduates today, I commend you on this shining achievement. You are graduating from USC, one of the very best research universities in the world. And you should be equally proud of graduating from the Price School one of the most esteemed public affairs schools in the nation and the world. USC Price has distinguished itself as a great institution whose impact extends beyond exceptional academic quality to service and engagement in public policy and in our communities. We have students who want to gain the best education, but also want to make a positive contribution in the world by tackling complex policy issues and by planning and developing better communities for the future. Earlier this year, our Bedrosian Center hosted a special Holt lecture featuring LeVar Burton, who was known, who as you know, was the longtime host of Reading Rainbow and starred in Roots. In his talk, he mentioned how powerful storytelling can be. He called it an essential element of the human experience and an invaluable tool in the service of education. This made me think about the story of the Price School and how I would characterize it. For 10 years now, I've had the privilege of serving as dean, and I've been fortunate to see the inspiring work of our faculty, our students, and our alumni up close. I've gotten to witness the continued growth of the Price School as one of the very best in the country. So the way I see it, our story, the story of the Price School, has several key elements, but I will just mention three of them. First is striving to be the best. We have sought continuously to improve, to be as good as we can be. From the beginning, the school is committed to national quality and excellence and has been recognized as one of the top 10 schools in the nation over its history. In the last few years, we've brought in additional world-class faculty, attracted the highest caliber of students, expanded our scope of research, and risen in the national rankings. We have worked hard to provide the best technical and substantive education for the best and brightest students. Secondly is entrepreneurial and innovative. You know, the formation of our school in 1929 was groundbreaking for urban planning and public administration and for public affairs schools, with the Price School being one of the first of its kind in the nation. And 85 years later, this legacy continues. Over the decades, the school has led in entrepreneurial investments in new interdisciplinary centers and degree programs. Just this year, for example, we are launching 
our new Master of Nonprofit Leadership and Management degree. And through your education here, you received an innovative, cutting-edge curriculum. You benefited from the unique interdisciplinary focus enabling you to analyze complicated problems and find creative solutions. You also gained an understanding and an appreciation of the critical interplay among government, business, and the nonprofit sector in solving public problems. Gene Case, president of the Case Foundation, while speaking at a recent USC Center on Philanthropy event, captured what we try to instill in our students when she said, be fearless in experimenting with new ideas for solving urgent social needs. And then third, make a difference in the world. The initial impetus for the school was from the good government movement in the early 20th century that saw public service as a value in addressing community and national issues. It continues as the core value of the school today. We address real world problems in partnership with practitioners. In the words of well-known political scientist Charles Lindblom, we are committed to providing usable knowledge which advances academic theory but also makes an impact in the world. The Price School is also making a difference globally as early as the 1940s, long before globalization became the norm. And today we are globalizing our curriculum, offering executive education, research projects in many countries, and recruiting international students. So I hope that these three elements have defined your education at Price, that you all strive to be the best, be entrepreneurial in seizing opportunities, and make a difference to enhance the quality of life for communities everywhere. But I would like to expand just briefly on this last point about making a difference. This is not something you can do just by attending class. It fundamentally requires the opportunity to build character. It is about what David Brooks, the famous journalist, in his new book, The Road to Character, describes as the mindset that people through the centuries have adopted to put iron in their core and to cultivate a wise heart. He adds that certain people seem to possess an impressive inner cohesion. They are not blown off course by storms. They don't crumble in adversity. They seek moral improvement. Their minds are consistent, and their hearts are dependable. As part of a great education, we seek to provide our students with meaningful opportunities to persevere and build character. We strive to educate the whole person with values and a sense of integrity. And when I think of the story of our school, including the importance of building character, I cannot help but admire our school's namesake, Saul Price. He certainly was innovative and entrepreneurial. He be, may be best remembered as a revolutionary business entrepreneur who founded Price Club, which later became Costco. He also strove to be the best, to continually improve his business, having a huge impact in the retail industry. But Saul Price, was much more than that. He was a man of extraordinary principle and character. In the 1950s, he took a stand against discrimination of African Americans in Texas at a time when it was very unpopular to do so. He supported a liv livable wage and good benefits for workers when other retail firms didn't. He also cared about the community. He started Price Charities, a nonprofit that helps revitalize low-income urban areas through comprehensive community development and he cared about public policy. For example, he helped forge the law that created the Earned Income Tax Credit, one of the most successful social policies in the country. So as you can see, Saul Price exemplified the best qualities of our school, entrepreneurial, striving to be the best, and a strong character that propelled him to make a difference, not only in business, but also in public policy and the community. And now the moment has arrived for you to carry on our story, the great legacy of the Price School. In the years ahead, you can make a lasting imp impact. Whatever path you decide to follow, it is our hope that you will build companies and organizations that create wealth, but also value employees, customers, and stakeholders. Create healthcare programs to improve efficiency and quality while benefiting the less fortunate. Promote policies that support growth while also protecting the environment. Develop real estate that fosters economic development as well as a community and a sense of place. And work towards more inclusive definitions of community, 
social justice, and diversity. Today, you've become USC alumni. You now hold a special place in the Trojan family, which is lifelong and worldwide. You are part of one of the most powerful and engaged university networks across the globe. The Christ Price School alone boasts more than 17,000 alumni in nearly 50 countries. Our alumni make a vital difference every day in government, business, real estate, education, nonprofits, and healthcare. We hope you will maintain strong ties to USC and the Price School. As new students join our programs, they will look to you, the recent alumni, for inspiration and support. So in closing, let me offer my hearty congratulations once again. I wish you the very best, and I look forward to learning about all of your accomplishments. Fight on. And at this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker, Curtis Conway. Many of you know him as a standout NFL player and a TV sports analyst. But we are very proud to know him as a USC Price School alum who represents our school's mission and values in the larger world. Like Saul Price, he is a man of character who is making an important difference in the world with integrity, humility, and determination. He embraced the special spirit present in the Price School during his time here and continues to this day to improve the quality of many lives in our community. Curtis was born here in Los Angeles, just a few blocks from the USC campus. He worked hard as a high school student to earn a scholarship to USC, and in so doing, became the first in his family to pursue a higher education. He, of course, went on to achieve great success professionally. But what impresses me most is how Curtis used the education he received at Price to invest in and better the community where he grew up. Curtis is greatly dedicated to public service, volunteering his time to work with a number of nonprofit organizations, including Feeding America and Fitness for Kids. In addition, he hosts athletic camps at the USC Coliseum each year to promote the value of education to underserved inner city kids and works with minority youths and their parents to help students prepare for and succeed in college. Given all that he does for the Price School, USC, and our community, we are very, very proud to have Curtis as our commencement speaker. Please join me in welcoming Curtis Conway. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Dean Jack Knott for that kind introduction. Thanks, Dean. Congratulations to the class of 2015. I also want to congratulate the families and friends who have joined us today. It's a special moment for you also. It's a privilege for me to be back at the USC Price School. When I first got the request to be the keynote speaker, I was shocked. I'm like, wow, this is a big deal, and this is my first rodeo. <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> but I love encouraging people to be the best they can be. You know, I've always agreed to talk to football teams about football. So how could I say no to my own school, the Price School? This is where I earned my degree. Also, how could I say no to Dean Jack Knott? This is my man right here, so <laughs> thanks for having me again. To our undergrads, you are starting your journey to accomplish your goals and dreams. Bring your enthusiasm and energy to the next chapter of your life. To our master students, you came to Price to change the world, and now you have the skills to do so. This is your time to spark change. To our executive students, you are advancing professionals that are essential to our communities. The world will be better served because of your commitment and contributions. To our professional doctorate and PhD students, 
you are leading innovative research and creating new knowledge. Your work will shape the future of our academic fields and have an impact for the betterment of all society. It's also been told that we have several students here who are first-generation graduates. I'm also a first-generation graduate, so I commend all of you. And although that role was difficult, I consider it one of my greatest accomplishments. You, you guys are now the blueprint and the light to your families because now you show them the way. And now I want to get into to my journey. I want to share my journey to where I've gotten today. And you heard Dean not talk about my success, making it to the NFL, and now being a broadcaster. And trust me, it was not easy. You know, I remember I grew up right here in South Central LA, and my mom had me when she was 15 years old. And I never had a father in my life. So growing up here, I grew up in a time where gangs were at an all-time high and drug dealing was at an all-time high. And that's all I saw coming out my house every day was gang members and drug dealing. But I loved to play the game of football. And anything that I could do to play football, I did it. I remember as kids, we used to play football right outside the Coliseum, outside on the grass. And I remember me and my friends used to say, man, if we could just go inside the Coliseum and play on that grass, how cool would that be? Well, as the years went on and I got to high school, I became a pretty good football player, and I was being recruited by every school in the country, including USC. And I wanted to be a Trojan so bad that I didn't take another recruiting trip. The only one I took was to USC. Now, mind you, I was being recruited by every school in the country and didn't give them an opportunity. That's how much I love this school ever since I was a kid. But during that journey, football wasn't the only thing I needed to do to get into USC. I needed to get good grades. I did that. I checked that box. But there was something that stood in my way, and all you guys know what it is, the SAT. <laughs> oh my God, that SAT, man, it, it drove me crazy. You know, at that time, I went to Hawthorne High School and we didn't have prep SAT courses, so trying to study for the test was very difficult for me. Um, I was running track at the time and playing football, so that was kind of my main focus. And once I started being recruited, the SAT popped up and it was like, you have to pass this test. Oh, don't no worry about it. I get good grades. I'm a pretty good student. I can pass the test. So I walk into these tests and the first time I took it, failed. Okay, I'll do it the next time. Second time I took it, failed. Okay, something's not right here. Third time, now the third time I had to take the test, it was the day after the prom. So I had to make a decision. Do I go to my senior prom or do I get some rest? Because I have to take the SAT. So I'm trying to do the right thing and I don't go to my senior prom because I need this test to get into the school. So I go and I take the test. I wait for the results. Yes, fail. Three times in a row I failed the SAT. Now, the last time I have an opportunity to take the test. And USC has already said, if you pass this test, you can get in school. And it meant a lot to me because I really wanted to go to college, and especially USC. Now, I ran track, and I was a really good track runner. The last time I was able to take the SAT was the day of the state finals in track and field. And I had made it to the state finals in four events. Meanwhile, the day before was a Friday. It was the state prelims. So I ran in the state prelims for events, had to get home, get some sleep, not only to rest up for tomorrow's big day in track, but my last opportunity to take the SAT. So I'm trying to do again everything right. I go and I compete. I advance to the finals in all four events. But what's on my mind is that SAT. So I get up the next morning. 
I go to the school and I take the test. From there, I go from the school, now I have to compete in the state finals in my senior year. And I must say, we, we did a pretty good job in track and field. But after that day was over, trust me, I couldn't sleep until I got the results of my SAT. And again, failed. Four times I failed the SAT, and USC said, we can't accept you because that was a requirement. And here I am with this pride, and I'm saying, I've been recruited by all the schools in the country. I can go play football somewhere else. So I go to Nebraska, and I was there for about two weeks. And I remember sitting in line, about to turn in my classes, and I was there with a friend of mine who was also from California. He went before I did. And while he was up there, something just sunk in and said, this is not the place for you. And although they offered me a scholarship uh, with a Prop 48, which meant I couldn't play that year, but I can, also, I can go to school, something just wasn't settling right. And when it was my turn to go up, I told my buddy, I said, this is, this is not for me. I'm a Trojan. I, I don't belong here. And so I called my grandmother, she gave me a flight, and trust me, that was tough trying to convince her that I wasn't going to college, I was coming back home because that was the goal to get to college, but I wanted to go to USC so bad. And so I come home and I found a place called Princeton Review to help me study for the SAT. And while studying for the SAT, I had to get a job because now school has started and I had to help my grandmother pay bills. So I had to get a job. And I was working construction for a really good friend of mine and a strong alumni here named Ron Tudor. Gave me a job doing construction, and trust me, I hated it. I mean, I was digging dirt, and I'm saying, watching football on Saturday, and I'm seeing friends play. Again, no place for me. And so I studied for the SAT, and on the very first one, I passed it. And so at this point, I'm thinking, OK, the spring is coming. I run track. I can go to USC. Not so fast. I had to wait the whole year to come in on a football scholarship. And so now, again, I'm sitting, still working. And I passed the SAT. And that was one of the toughest times of my life. Because here I was, sitting at home, working a job, knowing I was supposed to be in college. and. You know, everyone was talking about me. The media was, you know, talking bad about me, calling me a dumb athlete, and he failed the SAT four times. But it really came down to I wasn't preparing myself for the SAT. But once I decided to go somewhere and prepare for it, I passed it. So that was a huge lesson and pivotal part of my life is understanding how important preparation is. Now, I get to USC as a football player, and, of course, I'm here and I want to graduate, but to be honest with you, I was here to play football. I wanted to be a professional football player. And by my junior year, they were saying that if I left school, I would be a first round draft pick. If I stayed in school, the next season, my senior year, I would be up for the Heisman Trophy. Well, of course, growing up in South Central LA and not having a lot and wanting to do a lot for my grandmother, I decided to leave school. But I left a year and a half on the books that I had to finish to get my degree. And so I never forget, I get drafted. I'm a first round draft pick, seventh pick of the draft. I instantly have seven figures, a million dollars in my pocket. And I never forget thinking, wow, I made it. Like, I'm actually playing in the NFL. But something, again, was still not sitting with me. I didn't complete my degree. So I said, one day I'm going to have kids. And one day I'm going to have to talk to people about the importance of education. How can I do that if they find out that I left school and didn't complete my education? So the first off season, which was the spring, I came back to school. And for the next three off seasons, I was back here at USC completing my degree. <laughs> y 
you know, the, the funny part about that part of it is, you know, I have all the money I've ever wanted. I'm, I'm playing what I, my sport, that uh, a dream that's come true. But I'm back in school, and I'll never forget that spring. Maybe it was like the third day a student said, Curtis, like, I just watched you play for the Bears. What are you doing back here in class? You got all this money. You're actually in class. And, and, and I had to tell him it's, it's way bigger than the money. It's bigger than football. You know, I didn't pass the SAT four times. A lot of people would have quit because that SAT supposedly tells us that you're incapable of doing college work. How is that so now that I'm sitting here with a degree from Price? But some people will have quit on that. So I knew at some point my degree was going to be way, just, it'll be bigger than I was, bigger than football, bigger than the money that I was going to make playing professional sports. And I had a great NFL career. I played 12 seasons. That was a blessing. And now, in my final stage of my, I would say, my second career, I'm a broadcaster for NFL Networks and Pac-12 Network. And in that journey, I was told, ah, we don't need you. Nah, that's OK. Oh, we have enough people. But I kept going. People see me now on TV and they say, wow, man, you're actually doing your thing. But they didn't see everything that I had to go through. The five years before I actually got on TV, they didn't see that work that I had to put in there to get to that point. And so I've always wanted to inspire people to be the best you can be. And when I mean be the best you can be, you have to ask yourself before you do anything in life, who are you? Not what someone tells you you are, or tells you what you should be. Next, you have to love what you're doing. You know, I get the question all the time, how did you make it to the NFL? Because there's a lot of kids out there playing football. I love the game. I did everything I could to play football. How did you go back and get your degree? I wanted to get my degree so bad because I wanted to encourage other people to get their education. It meant that much to me. That's being successful to me, to find something you love doing, because that's what matters the most in the end. You also have to have the patience and the work ethic. That's key to your vision, patience. A lot of people don't have the patience. Once things are not working out the way they planned it to work out, they venture off to something else. You have to keep going. With those answers, you can develop a strong vision and no obstacle you can overcome. You can't overcome, I'm sorry, and nothing will stop you. I want to encourage people to get their education. That is so important to me because people watch me play football and that's all they talk about is being a professional athlete. The percentage of kids making it to the NFL is less than 1%. But you can always go and get your edu education. I also want to let you guys know that you can't be afraid to fail. Remember that. You can't be afraid to fail. Trust me, as you just heard, that's part of the journey. That's part of it. Understand that it's unavoidable. And you have to give back. You have to get up. You have to keep going no matter what. You have to get up and you have to keep going. A lot of people are going to tell you to stop and give up. I told you, four times I failed. Trust me, I had people in my ear. Might as well stop. Go get a job. Give up on it. You can't do it. I wouldn't be sitting here today if I didn't do it. So don't believe when people say you can't. The last thing I want to talk about is the value of giving back. No matter how much money you make, how successful you are, the journey is not complete without giving back. Giving back is who we are here at Price. The Price School has a long history of serving the community. 
and I'm very proud to do my part in keeping the tradition going. You know, after everything I accomplished in football, I wanted to give back to my community, and I would go to these little league games, and I would hear parents talk about how great their kids were, and it was hard to tell them, like, you know, the likelihood of your kid making it to the NFL is very slim, but you need to focus on school. So I started a camp that I did for free, and I understood what would draw the kids to the camp, giving them free gear, being able to come inside the Coliseum like I didn't, like I wasn't able to do when I was a kid, but being able to go in the Coliseum was the attraction to the kids. And uh, the heart of my camp was trying to educate parents on what they needed to do to get their kids in school. Because trust me, guys, believe this. Trust me, believe this. You would be surprised what some parents don't know about getting their kids in school. And I felt it was very important that if I had all this knowledge and research, it's important for me to give that to them because everyone is not going to get a football scholarship. These parents have other kids that are going to have to go through school and only school. And if they didn't understand what it took and how to apply to get in college, it was just no hope. So I felt that was very important for me to do that. And I did it for free. Technically, I didn't do it for free. I got more out of that than anything in the world. Being able to give back, because football came and it went. But to be able to see the smile on parents' face saying, wow, I didn't know this. I knew it. But sometimes we take for granted what we know and we just assume that everyone else should know. But these parents were so overwhelmed with the knowledge that they got about their other kids being able to get into school. So today I challenge you to make a difference by giving back. We have to give back no matter how big or how small. Like I mentioned, some people don't know what you know or have the resources that you have. In closing, I just want to say today you earn your graduate from Price one of the best schools in the country, and from USC, of course, one of the best universities in the world. And because what you accomplished, all of you now have what it takes to succeed. I really believe that. I know everyone here will go on to be leaders, innovators, problem solvers, whether it's in business, nonprofit, government, or education. This is who we are here at Price. All of our backgrounds are unique and different in their own ways. But we were all drawn to the Price School because we share the same values. And that's what matters most. If you don't remember anything I said today, try to remember this. Each and every one of you each and every one of you are special, and you have to believe that. But you're no better than the next man or the next woman that's sitting next to you. I want to say congratulations, best of luck to all you, and you know I can't leave without each and every one of you putting those two fingers in the air. And on the count of three, I want you to say, fight on Price School. One, Two, three, fight on Price School. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Well, thank you so much, Curtis, for sharing your story and inspiring us to be the best and to give back. I'm now pleased to introduce Taylor Vaughn, the Price School's valedictorian. Tay is receiving the Bachelor of Science in Policy Planning and Development with a concentration in sustainable urban planning and a minor in architecture. He entered USC as a freshman in the spring of 2012 and has really distinguished himself as a leader and a scholar. In fact, he is graduating today as our valedictorian and has earned a 9.93 grade point average.
At USC, he participated in the Price School's Detroit Lab that resulted in a recommended plan for the management of open space in Detroit. He has held several officer positions in his fraternity, Phi Delta Theta, most recently serving as Vice President in 2014. He also has served as an ambassador with the Price School and completed internships in architecture and graphic design. Immediately after graduation, he will take one final Price research course and will be researching how Olympic stadiums can be designed for a better transition to sustainable use once the games are over. And he will be conducting this research in several cities, including Athens and Beijing, Rio de Janeiro, Sydney, and Atlanta. And in July, he will begin a full-time job with Walt Disney Imagineering in Glendale. He will be part of a project management team that oversees the design and implementation of attractions, accommodations, and entertainment at Disney properties in Florida. So please join me in welcome Taya Vaughn. So a few days ago, I sat down with uh, Professor Mike Tom, and uh, we were discussing the speech together. And he said to me, "Tay, what are you going to say that every valedictorian ever hasn't said before?" And I said, "Nothing." But I do have a few thoughts, though, to share with you. So uh, what I was thinking about is that I remembered the first time that I walked into the LA Coliseum on game day. And I realized that I was surrounded by twice the number of people that live in my hometown. And you know, whether we're from small towns, big cities, from here abroad, just like me entering the LA Coliseum, each one of us, when we, when we entered the USC campus, we were individuals, and we were one amongst many. But throughout our time at Price, we started to become shaped by the people who inspired us. We were shaped by people who guided us, like Nam Ung, People uh, like Professor Lisa Schweitzer, who encouraged us to explore our city. People like Professor Jennifer Miller, who uh, supported our personal endeavors. And our mentors, who shaped us as academics and, and as individuals. Thank you, Professors Michael Tom and Liz Folletta. We were also shaped by our organizations and our experiences. We identify ourselves by our accomplishments, by our friendships, and for some of us by our Greek letters. But most importantly, we were shaped by each other. Throughout our years in Price, we have all learned from each other, we've shared memories, and we've pretended to contribute to classroom discussions. <laughs> our experiences together have run the gamut, all the way from collaborating as a team to uh, figure out what to do with the open space in Detroit, to uh, the night before the big presentation when you uh, are left hanging by that one group project partner. Our colleagues in Price are the kind of people who inspire us to think broader and challenge us be to become greater versions of ourselves. So as we go our separate ways today, Price School encourages us to shape our world, and here comes the valedictory stick. But what we realized is that the Price School has shaped us. And as we fill this stadium today, just like we filled the Coliseum on game day, we realize that we're no longer the individuals that we were when we arrived, but we're a community now. Because even though you have to wait for every single one of us to cross, today is not about the individual on the stage. Today is about the celebration of the successes that we've been able to achieve together. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly amazed by what we've been able to accomplish as a, as a unit in the past three and a half years. So to each of you, I say thank you. But more importantly, I say congratulations. 2015 to victory, fight on. Thank you very much, Tay. So yesterday we had an award ceremony, and some of you attended, in which we honored those students who had achieved academic excellence. And at this time, I would like to ask the award recipients, anyone who received the award yesterday, to please stand and could we recognize you for your outstanding achievements? Congratulations. <laughs> so now the time has arrived to recognize the hard work of each and every one of the graduates. 
and we will call up each student individually and hand out uh, diploma covers. The diploma, I assure you, is coming. <laughs> uh, it takes about four to six weeks. Uh, we will begin with the Doctor of Philosophy candidates and Doctor of Policy Planning and Development candidates who will be hooded by their dissertation chairs. Then follow with handing diploma covers to the master's candidates and conclude with the undergraduates. Associate Dean and Professor Marlon Bournette and Professor Gary Painter, will you please come to the podium at this time? Dean Knott, I now present to you the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy. Jung Hun Choi, Housing Market Crisis and Underwater Homeowners, Dissertation Chair, Gary Painter. G. Wong, Governance Networks, Selective Inclusion and Effectiveness. Dissertation Chair, Professor Terry L. Cooper. Denise Diaz Payan, Essays Examining Nutritional Behavior and Policy in California, Dissertation Chair, Professor Michael B. Nickel. <laughs> Sandeep Chakrabarti. The Demand for Reliable Travel, the Evidence from Los Angeles and Implications for Public Transit Policy, Dissertation Chair, Professor Jean-Viev Giuliano. Ray Kalnan, a better method for measuring housing affordability and the role that affordability played in the mobility outcomes of Latino immigrants following the Great Recession. Dissertation Chair, Professor Gary Painter. <laughs> Jenna Zaslav Goldberg, living arrangements of young Latino couples getting by in high cost Los Angeles. Dissertation Chair, Professor Dowell Myers. Vivian C. Wong, Curating Gastronomy, Restaurants and Social Media in the Cultural Economy. Dissertation Chair, Professor Elizabeth Currid Halkett. <laughs> Young Mi Lee, The Institutionalization of Nonprofit Management, Emergence, Development, and Legitimization. Dissertation Chair, Professor Elizabeth Grady. Hooded by Professor Gary Painter. Yes. Let's give a round of applause to our PhD graduates, class of 2015. Dean Knott, I now present to you the candidates for the Doctor of Policy, Planning, and Development. Justin James McCusker, County Governance Reform in California, Introduction of the Council Executive Method and the Elected County Executive. Project, project Care, Chair, Professor Peter Robertson. Irma Bercera, where there is discretion, should law enforcement officers at the local level be involved in enforcing federal immigration law? Project Chair, Professor James E. Moore, 
hosted by Professor Deborah Natoli. Shi Chin, China-Africa Cooperation and Assessment Through the Lens of China's Development Experience. Project Chair, Professor Peter Robertson. Shirley Feldman Jensen, Conditions for an App Serving Unplanned Urban Communities, Integrating Cell Phones into Health Promotion Messaging. Project Chair, Professor Juliet Musso, hooded by Juliet Musso. Grace Ng Nadell, Lessons from TAP Implementation, Obstacles and Solutions to the Transit User's Experience. Project Sir Juliet Musso. Frank Wasco, Life Without Nuclear Power, a nuclear power plant retirement formulation model and guide based on economics, San Onofre Nuclear Generating Stations case, economic impacts. Project Chair, Professor Robert Denhart. Brady Nicole Chapel, Choice Neighborhoods Initiative, a spatial and exploratory analysis of the Housing Authority City of Los Angeles' Public Housing Transformation Plan. Project Chair, Professor Leonard Mitchell, hooded by Professor Deb Debbie Natoli. Catherine okay. Guevara, Urging best practices for using offline mobile phones to train English teachers in developing countries. Project Chair, Professor Deborah Natoli. Let's give a round of applause to our Doctor of Policy, Planning, and Development graduates, Class of 2015. Dean Knott, I am pleased to present the candidates for Master of Health Administration. Rachel Chiang. <laughs> Tiffany San Juan. Marka Hawkman. Brianna Mailer. Crystal Sanford. Michelle Heather. Philippa Osafu Amapadu. <laughs> Lauren Gaynor. Mariama Jarlo. Decree Sweeney. Lilit Arshachian. Jared Durgan. Marjan Zarangabal. <laughs> Ian Toll. Natasha Roy. Christopher Wright. Angelica Estrin. Afshin Islam. Gunit Kaur. Michael Amador. Woo! Irma Hernandez. Eric Manthi.
Caitlin Olesner. Angela Lush. Michelle Yamamoto. Lauren Donahoe. Michael Wynn. Michael Salman. <laughs> Kulesi Corbin. Jay Gadani. Giovanni Domini. Judy Huang. Douglas Lou Hill. Adam Kapasi. Mike Jones. J Jesse Eichelberger. <laughs> Layla Najad. John Ronald P. Bautista. Rabia Ahmed. Benjamin Foster. Sarah Meshkat. Ramaninsky Jen Doli. Andrea Lauren Swan. Alexandra Wittenberg. Joanne Kaufman. Can Gang. Carrie Chin. Grace Jing. Don Clayton McClure Marshall. Varsha Shanoi. Michael Whalen. Baruch Damase. Arsen Baramesh. Jitin Veer. Jennifer Wong. Line. Okay. Go do another one next. Oh, yeah. Let's give a round of applause to our Master of Health Administration graduates, class of 2015. <laughs> Dean Knott, I am pleased to present the candidates for Executive Master of Health Administration. Varesh Charasita. Julie Sandy. Stephen Johnson. Christine Tanius. Stacy Tamara Taradoff, MD. Sammy King. Pravina Mason. Deborah Griffin. Kavita Consagra, MD. Olive Suarez. Helen Kersey. Christine Pack. John Petring. Adam Howard Feldman. <laughs> Daryl Nash. Dana Redman. Nancy Chen. 
Gregory D. Chesley. Carolyn Launer. Andrew Landis. Derek Bolden. Ronnie Yamanaka. Jesse Reyes. Let's give a round of applause to our executive <laughs> Master of Health Administration graduates class of 2015. Dean Nott, I'm very pleased to introduce the candidates for the Master of Leadership degree. Courtney Higuchi. Roland Gallardo. David Miranda. Helen Pitts. Stephen Goldfarb. Jacqueline Oriana. Bernard Anderson. Valerie Alvarado. Natasha Kuzimanovich. Uh, okay, sorry. Valerie Alvarado. Janet Viermia. Sydney Arzu. Aura Gara in Chivara. Paul Quatemoc Hernandez. Sylvia Gutierrez. Margo McAdams. Laura Sahagun Heron. Moral Chalian. Sonia Perez. <laughs> Kathleen Maria O'Halloran. Gerald Davenport. Juan Martinez. Let's give a round of applause to our Executive Master of Leadership graduates, class of 2015. Dean Knott, I am pleased to present the candidates for the Master of Planning. Jason Patrick Douglas. Rosaline Teo. Patrick John Martinez. Shrotu Sharma. Rigoberto Bejerano. Sasha Yusuf. Sean Inkler Cruz. Elaine Lee. Rebecca Simon. Ray Tu. Shane Phillips. Sylvia Smith. Alvaro Gomez. 
Monica Lee. Stephen Welliver. Christina Schopert Devereaux. Eric Claros. Claire Kelly. Hai Jin Lin. V. Fan Hong. Juan Lopez. Lawrence Young Jr. Jorge Adler. Christine Blackman. David Wiseglass. Lavanya Ragu Raman. Corey Chang. Jing Yi Fan. Carl Fielding. Jonathan Rivas. Rogelio Pardo. Rebecca Chung. Peter Soderberg. Jessica Wayek. Jonathan Yang. Leslie Paula Rowan. Nicholas Armour. Weibo Wong. Samuel Zeinemer. Chanyao Duan. Michelle Sulahian. Shading Zhou. Christine Rose. Zhua Wang. Ariane Brisky. Jinan Do. Taylor Coyne. <laughs> Rhett Alexander Perrine. Claire Dwyer Eberly. Taylor Tom Shishin. Tara Worden. Aaron Barker. Allison Spindler. Sarah Hernick. Allison Bartol. Philip Burns. Jeffrey Cow. Sarah Oliveira. Wen Wen Zhu. Christina Trong. Taewon Kim. Ian Lin. Siyun Yin. Dean Wen Chin. Win Win Bin. Siang Yin Mei. Okay. 
Yingyi Hu. Let's give a round of applause to our Master of Planning graduates class of 2015. Dean Knott, I now present to you the candidates for the Master of Public Administration. Brittany Kathleen Mello. Kaya Okunevsky. Serena Kanji. Vincent Nguyen Liu. Robert Mushler. Michael Johnston. Meredith Leah Kaplan. Jennifer Kwai. Makeda Amelga. Lauren Wersch. Shane Phillips. Elizabeth Catherine Batlin. Nicholas Armour. Andrea Feisey. Rebecca Simon. Christine Tongo. Jenna Diaz Gonzalez. Alexis Clark. Kate Stanley. Oluwai Teo Ade Yei. Samantha Taylor. Jessica Liu. Woo! Zachary Ellison. Ashley Dittmar. Andres Vedova. Nikki Ung. Austin James Coyell. Rebecca McKenzie. Nikki Levy. Shannon Marie Anglero. Alexander Tachiki. Christopher Ramirez. Michelle Goldfarb Shapiro. Joshua Hoover. Kelsey Larson. Amy Smith. Anam Javed. Jessica Barker. Jessica Cutler. Robert Rodriguez. Allison Spindler. Kristen Gammon. Ani Hovasapian. Adrian Lee Kibler. Chanel Frampton. Mandy Jiang. An Tran. Sarah Hernick. Josue Cafrisi. Monica Lee. Anna Gabriella Sid. 
Carson Ward. Daisy Garza. Steven Jackson. Heidi Weersma. Stephanie Marquis. Derek Morgan. Mark Unpinko. Shu Shu Song. Adam James. Chen Ye Young. Julia Wine. Shin Ren Wang. Jessica Yoon. Yuan Z. Cher. Christopher Matthew Himes. Eric Claros. Jason Carroll. Tian Lan. Darren Goodman. Samuel Kwan. Michelle Lee. Ji Hui Wang. Tarmigan Abbott. Yuan Xuan Ji. Evelyn Santiago. Wendy Zhao. Jason Schaffner. Nobe Jean. Jason Dimsey. Yang Dong. Colin Akins. Jacqueline Agnello Wong. Brian Hoffman. Stephanie Shimada. Eric Newland. Nico Deanda Skaya. Daniel Bubadilla. Armando Barajas. Curran Brinson. Connor Peterson. Brandon Crouch. Motekuzoma Sanchez. Carolyn Nee. Eric Cooper. Brian Barcelona. Jonathan Oliva. Ruel Noyedo. Heidi Angela Chan. Erin Beth Edwards. Sissy Bonini. Jennifer Lim. Hatsune Aguilar Sanchez. Renee Jean Perez. Samantha Baker. Amanda Jo Damaris. Balin Sierra. Carlos Madrid. Stephen Welliver. Andrew Hackney. Jennifer Leah Cowan Morrison. Jeffrey Wolf. Megan Marie Bear Powers. 
Rebecca Unit. Santi Pinkerton. Jessica Urena. Nicholas John Clark. Evan Holloway. Jong Min Lee. Laura Albers. Chi Yan. Rebecca Raber. Yu Chao Lee. Sarah Adolfson. Suran Ao Yang. Andrew Yauk. Brett Reed. Heidi Kato. Agnes Zhao. Marvin Avgat Salman. Wen Yu Chen. Stephen Muff. Maggie Miao. Ryan Bingham. Yu Lu. Paige Roberts. Ting Wei Yin. Kathleen Savan. Zhao Meng Jiang. Heather Taylor Measley. Xiao Liang. Todd Seely. Si Wen Zhang. Nicholas Morales. Hannah Wu. Angela Weeks. Zhao Ying La. Young Park. Shizong Young. Sarah Vo Nan Tron. Jiahe Gyo. James Framuth. Xiang Yu Li. Yu Ting Ben. Lin Yun Du. Jan Lee. Jian Shin Ju. Shang Ying Xia. Zinan Xiang. Carmen Patricia Gomez. Yeah. Dana Coyle. Corina Jiang. Yan Yan Feng. Jiang An Li.
Kira Shin. Lu Wang. Yuang Zi Hu. Chen Mei Sai. Let's give a round of applause for our Master of Public Administration 2015 graduates. Dean Nod, I present to you the candidates for the Master of Public Policy. Angie Jean Marie. Emily Gaughan. Lindsay Estes. Tracy Carolyn Awad. Brianna Virgis. Gabriel Green. Chelsea Modern. Stephanie Hett. Adam Lane. Jennifer Power. Nathan Damodaran. Megan Bapke. Eric Michelson Warren. Erica Bangerter. Jeremy Griffin Ludenbeck. Ifen E Chu Kuo Ihin Nacho. Alexander Vaitkotsky. Brandon Frederick Debon. Marjan Garzi. Rhett Alexander Perrine. Brian Mayakawa. Zitsing Win. Sa Jung Kang. Apple Shufei G. Jason Patrick Douglas. C. Yu Yun. Alan Wang. Shi Yao Young. Previn Watana. Rebecca Velasco. Peter Hatterline. Kaylin Fitzgerald. Jeffrey Cow. Matthew Gonzalez. Yeah. Christopher Cole Robinson. Ricardo Vasquez. Yeah, Ricardo. Kenya Garcia. Manuel Angel Ruiz. Leah Myrie. Hedy Nam. Timothy Copeland. Francine Tran. Tanya Fatima Reza. Bonnie Ho. Francis Tevez. Daniel Hanna. Thomas DeLorenzo. Paula Bramlett. Tammy Lee.
Emily Chen. Lin Fao Chen. Let's give a round of applause to our Master of Public Policy graduates, class of 2015. Dean Nutt, I proudly present to you the candidates for the Master of International Public Policy and Management. Kazuo Fueta. Barbara Shang. Chun Huan Kim. Tomoko Takami. Darkhan Zi Yen Bai. Afnan Alshan Gidi. Hiroshi Yamasaki. Mohammed Jalusidin Jalal. Yu Ping Wang. Molly Nicholson. Nao Nakanishi. Chin Chong Wang. Russia Alkamis. Ki Sun. Fitsum Fanta. Ji Fei Li. Ing Nan Mi. Hang Yu Jo. Zhang Li. Peyu Se. Shunan Shao. Marhaba Mamuti. Sean Duo Zhang. Belem Lamas. Simiao Chang. Wafa Muhammad. Mangsha Huang. Najud Rashid. Xing Yu Wang. Sukaina Al Shihate. Show you Tiffany Cho. Chi Beg Kim. Ray Song. Mook Sim Song. Let's give a round of applause to our Master of International Public Policy and Management graduates, class of 2015. Dean Ott, I'm very pleased to present to you the candidates for the Dollinger Master of Real Estate Development. Evan Rodmaka. Hunter Beaumont. Colin Hooper. John David Pinnell. Joseph Benjamin Jonathan. Chadwick Douglas Manista. Michael J. Bryman. Aaron Nathan Goldstein. Alvin Zhu. Catherine Miles Randall. Catherine Michaelek. Adam Lang. 
Allison, Allison Swan title. Steve Mikhailovich. Salvador Gonzalez. Riley Lewis. Eduardo Us. James Bauham. Christina Acosta. Minju Na. Brett Granman. Brendan Sindel. Travis Marr. Jared Brenner Goldstein. Dong Gu Min. Kevin Rice. Jun Hyung Im. Willis Chin. Taeyun Kim. Tabor Gonzalez. Ara Haraj Rostamian. Benjamin O'Neill. John Jacobs Lake. Hagai Meisler. Benjamin Noah Benditson. Rod Eric Garcia. Let's give a round of applause to our Master of Real Estate Development graduates class of 2015. Dean Knott, I now present to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Science, Policy Planning and Development, and the candidates for the Bachelor of Science, Public Policy Management and Planning. Ariana Martino. Valedictorian Taylor Dixon Vaughn. John Tomlinson. Chanel Young. Camille Sanchez de la Vega. Arthi Chen Dortgar. Jonath Kohanim. Gaia Baswani Williams. Shlomi Safadia. William Donald Siwan. Sarah Shadi Godsey. Max Benjamin Melman. Asa Babajani. Guadalupe Cardona. Dior Dakanian. Jamie Zamora. Dylan Jones. Cheryl Ikegami. Emily Jean Napolitano Boone. Kelly O'Reiner. Liron Regev. Jessica Hernice. Maya Tuvia. Linda Chow. 
Catherine Mangan. Yunhyuk Rick Young. Tyler Convery. Christopher Alboredo. Nicholas Siegel. Dennis Gu. Tony Lobel. Emil Minsaroff. Kylie Watamo. Jonathan Azarkman. Richard Malouf. Dan Chuck Own. Chase Watson. Sean Yehuda. Mark Vonderweit. Samuel Kuyumbajan. Ryan Muller. Alan Gajinjian. Parker Ruder. Joseph Haman. Kaylin Obenauer. Daekun Lee. Morgan Link. Yunsa Ri. Mimi Hefner. Erica Fine. Eric Taborelli. Jesse Between Raimundo Jr. Victoria Elizabeth Leonard. Jonathan O'Connor. Robert Abugo. Marshall Kahn. Kiana Henry. Lizeth Zardinita. Tyler Henderson. David Aram Mirharuni. Tia Rosehill. Ryan Sasunian. Russell Renteria. Michael Sean Solomani. Hannah Schreyer. Iman Rabar. Kevin Carroll. Brandon Imani. Abraham Summers. Matthew Yashar. Edward Baker. Lucas Smith. Elise Deshaux. Mizuki Yamamoto. Angelina Raquel. Matthew Tabon. Carissa Robinson. Jacob Adler. Sarah McMinimi. James K. Stone. Megan Howell. Jordan Avila. 
Julia Bruton. Rory O'Sullivan. Paula Schloss. Catherine Schreier. Michelle Ara. Emery Molnar. Mina Safarian. William Beaton. Serena Ramakrishnan. Emily Gelhaus. Kimberly Hernandez. Sarah Ellis. Cesar Magdaleno. Pedram Aglian. John Caton. Derek Hong. Nicholas Wood. Jeffrey Nerofshin. Justin Shuhead. David Nazarian. Let's give a round of applause to our Bachelor of Science graduates, class of 2015. So, will everyone please stand? To the faculty and staff, proud parents, relatives and friends, I proudly present to you the Saul Price School of Public Policy class of 2015. Graduates, you may now move your tassels to the left side of your cap. Congratulations and good luck. Please remain seated for the recessional and then please join us for a reception just outside the arena. We invite you to enjoy your time with your family and friends. So please remain seated for the processional and join us for the reception. Thank you all. Take care. <laughs>